Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me on our Friday Night Live, Friday Live <laughs> uh, paint pouring demonstration. Uh, I'm excited about this one. We're going to be working with leftovers. I have got a uh, leftover canvas. I got leftover paints, leftover gloves, leftover everything. And hopefully we'll try to make a brand new exciting painting. So uh, welcome. We've got a bunch of people here already. Hey, Sharon. Nice to see you. LC is here. Uh, Susan is here. Hey, Susan. And uh, Carla is here, and Pat is in the house. Monique is here as well. That's awesome. So welcome, everyone. Hope you had a great uh, week um, and, uh, you know, had got the chance to get some painting in. Um, my week flew by like crazy. It was kind of wild and wild and exciting um, and frantic, but it's almost over, but uh, hopefully we'll end it on a high note with a, a fun, uh, good painting. So um, let's talk about uh, the colors we're going to be using. And oh my goodness, look who it is. Uh, my friend, uh, Carl Fitch is here. Um, welcome, Carl. I'm uh, so happy to see you. Uh, thanks for joining me. That's so, that's so awesome. What a treat. So um, my good friend, Carl, who has known me since uh, middle school, way, way back, a long, long time ago. So that's awesome. Welcome, Carl. Um, and everyone else has joined us. We've got Donna and Chris are here. Tracy is here. So um, I better be on point tonight uh, with everyone watching. Oh, my gosh. OK, so let's uh, take a look quick at our colors we're going to be using. I'm going to flip over to my other camera. And uh, here we go. I've got a leftover canvas. This painting we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, in one of our Friday demos. And it was okay. It was kind of an experiment. It was a, a funnel pour on a spinner. So we spun out a funnel pour. I don't love the way it turned out. It's not like the greatest thing. So we're going to just pour right over it and maybe we'll get uh, a, more, a little more interesting painting. So I am going to, uh, I've brought out a whole bunch of leftover paints that I have. And um, there's all sorts of different colors. I just kind of randomly grabbed them. Um, and I separated this batch over here from this batch. And the only reason I separated them is because I think these four right here are the ones I definitely want to use in my cup. We're going to do a ring pour on top of this canvas. Um, but I definitely want to use these four colors. I think they just kind of look good. But more importantly, there's a light color, a really light, like an off-white color, very, very white. Uh, we've got a really dark color, a black, and we've got two kind of intermediate colors, and they're quite different, actually. These are close to complementary colors, like a this is kind of a golden orange color, and then we've got this metallic teal, um, kind of uh, Miami Dolphin colors. So they're very complementary. I think they'll look good together. But then we've got all these other colors, and so I'm going to mix all these in here. Um, but I, I definitely want to get these four in. So I'm not going to think too hard about the layering order, like what color is going on top of another color. I'm just going to kind of fill my cup, not think too hard about it, try to get a bunch of different interesting colors, pour it on our uh, canvas, and see if we get an interesting painting. And I want to flip back here real quick. <clears throat> and uh, let me just flip back to me again. And I just want to show you the painting behind me. Now, this is a, a flip cup we did, uh, I don't know, a few months ago. And that's exactly how I created this painting. Just a bunch of random leftover paints, all kind of poured in a cup, and then you know flipped out on our, on our canvas. So um, I like to do these kind of, uh, you know, just kind of random uh, paintings using leftover paints without really thinking too much about it. Um, because the results can often be quite interesting. And I really like this painting behind me. Um, it's one of my favorite flip cups I ever did. And it's just a whole bunch of random stuff. So you never quite know what you're going to get. Um, well, anyway, even if you plan it out, you don't know. But when you just grab a bunch of random stuff, they can lead to, it can lead to some really interesting, uh, fun, unexpected results. So that's what we're going to try to do today. And uh, I'm going to uh, flip back here to our top camera. And by the way, as long as I'm going through, if you have any questions, uh, throw them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And I'm going to um, do one thing here. 
I'm just adjusting that uh, exposure a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, and Judy is asking a good question. Uh, Judy is here. Uh, she said, Brad, uh, do you know which are opaque or translucent? And um, there are some opaques and there are some translucents. Um, black is opaque. This white is opaque. These are actually opaque. Most metallics are opaque or semi-transparent. Uh, um, so I don't have a lot of really transparent colors in here. There are some maybe semi-transparents. Most of them are opaque, but I'm not really too worried about it. Um, so I, I don't really, I'm not, that's not top of mind. So um, sometimes I'll think about transparent colors and opaque colors, but not too often. Mostly I'm just focused on the color. Um, the only time it really comes into play where you have to kind of be careful is when you're using yellows and oranges. And I've got orange here, but it's a metallic orange, which is an opaque color. I've got a little bit of gold here, but that's also like a semi-transparent. So I'm not too worried about any of these. Um, but when you're using like uh, cadmium yellows, um, you know, all the yellows, a lot of them are, are transparent. Um, oranges, a lot of them are transparent. Then you kind of have to be a little more cautious of what you're layering them next to. But in this example, I am not, I don't really care at all. So um, I'm just kind of focused mostly on color. And usually I just focus on color instead of opacity or translucency. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So, all right, good question though. And uh, Sharon is saying, I'm very adventurous. Yes, we are having an adventure today and uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's a good adventure. So. Uh, all right, and let's see here. Uh, Mama Dulas is here. Hey, Mama Dulas, thanks for joining us. It's nice to see you again. So let's get uh, started and go ahead and layer our cup. I'm, I've got my cup right here. This is a, I think it's a 12 ounce cup, um, but I need 10 ounces of paint for 16 by 20 uh, ring pour. So I've marked it right there for 10 ounces. So I'm going to uh, just move my canvas up a little bit so I can layer my cup and have a nice uh, area right here. I've, my canvas is prepped. I never took the tape off the bottom or the, or the push pins actually, just cause I, I figured I'd probably pour over this eventually. So uh, here we go. So what am I gonna start with? This is probably the most important question with a ring pour or a straight pour, because that color is going to be kind of the central focus point or focal point of your painting. And I think I'm gonna start with our lightest color right here, the white. And uh, that's kind of a, a traditional thing. Actually, no, let's be, get really adventurous. That's kind of boring and predictable. I'm gonna start with our orange and uh, just put some orange in there. And then I'll put in a little bit of the, the white, kind of like that. Okay, so we've got uh, an orange and we got our lightest color. So I know I'll have some good uh, light values in kind of the center of our center of interest. Let's just jump over and start adding some, some random colors now. I've got this darker kind of teal color. Um, I've got this dark kind of purple. It's like a kind of a grayish purple. I really like that color a lot. And I'm, I'm layering the, the cup from the same side, um, kind of these floating layers. So they're kind of floating on top of one another. And uh, since this is a ring pour, I'm being careful with my layering. If it was a flip cup, you can kind of throw stuff in willy-nilly. I'm being a little more careful though. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with some of the black, like early on in the cup. So we have some dark in there, some really dark values. And what's next? Maybe some gold. I like gold a lot, so I use it all the time. And let's see, what else do we have? Maybe some of this um, blue. It's kind of a middle value, kind of a grayish blue. I think that's kind of pretty. And um, I'll, I'll tell you one thing I am kind of looking at um, as I'm layering the cup. Uh, I'm not too concerned with the colors, but I am con kind of concerned with the values. So I like to have maybe a lighter value than a little darker value um, to have more contrast in the painting. So that's... Um, something I am kind of looking at. There's a, that's a very similar value, like two next to each other, that blue and then this um, teal color. What else? Maybe I'm gonna put in this copper. 
is always fun to play with. And uh, I've got maybe a little more of the black. And a lot of these um, top layers probably going to be tilted off. So you don't have to be as worried about those. I've got this interesting, it's like a salmon-y color. It's a very pretty color. I mixed a bunch of stuff together, leftover paints. And I got this interesting kind of color. I'll put some of that in there. That might be kind of cool. Um, what else haven't I used? I haven't used this dark um, kind of reddish crimson. Maybe some of that would look good. Maybe I'll use a little more of our orange. And let's see, maybe a little more of our white. And I'm almost to the top now of our line. And maybe one more thing. What I haven't I used yet? Um, I don't think I've used this. No, I don't need to use it like a random color at the end, maybe just one that we've used before. Um, let me see, I like this purple. I'll put a little bit of the purple back in there. And there we go, we've got our uh, 10 ounces of paint in our layered cup. It's got lots of different colors, a lot of crazy stuff happening. So hopefully it'll be interesting. I'm gonna move kind of my paints away to the side quickly here. and uh, make some room. Slide our big old cup over here. And we can pull our, pull our canvas back. And one thing I'll talk about the canvas really quickly. Uh, I haven't done anything to it. It just dried and um, that's it. I'm just gonna pour right over the top. I'm not even gonna put a base coat down, which I normally do for all my paintings. Um, sometimes I don't put a base coat on when I pour over an old painting, because the first painting, like the paint that's on here, um, is gonna cause it to be more slippery than just a raw canvas. So the base coat is really optional. You can put one on, a thin one if you want. I'm just gonna let it go. So we're just gonna pour right straight on top. Also, I get asked a lot if I should, or if you, you should gesso over a painting before you apply another painting on top and it's really your call. I really don't like to do that. Um, the acrylic uh, adheres very well to other acrylic paint. So there's really no need for gesso. Uh, gesso is really to prime your canvas to uh, accept the paint, but um, you can paint over another painting just fine, no problem. I've never had a problem doing it that way. I have had a problem when I have applied gesso first though, because um, sometimes the gesso doesn't adhere as well to the, the previous painting and it'll just peel right off. So um, I, I, don't, I don't ever gesso over an old painting. Um, one other thing is it's very important to uh, know what was in your paints before you paint it on them. So if this is all, all mixed with the Floetrol, just like all the paints over here are mixed with the Floetrol, my, my easy formula, which is two parts Floetrol, one part paint and a little bit of water, uh, there's no silicone in here. Um, there's also no glue at all. Um, you want to avoid trying to pour, let's say, Floetrol mixed paints over a painting that has glue-based paints in them. They do not like to adhere to each other. Um, there's something about the glue and the Floetrol. Uh, when the paint is dry, uh, your paint can can like just kind of peel right off or separate. So always try to use the same uh, pouring mediums um, to, to pour over, if that makes any sense. So don't try to mix uh, or pour over a painting that has like a different type of pouring medium than the paints you're gonna use. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and uh, let's see here, uh, Susan's got a question. Uh, is pouring over metallic without a base coat? Um, yeah, you could. I, I've never had a problem with that. As long as it's acrylic acrylic paint um, mixed with Floetrol, that's fine. And you're pouring more acrylic paint mixed with Floetrol over it, that's fine. So uh, what I don't recommend is uh, any paints that you have, like if this was, if I had made this painting and it had a glue-based medium in all the colors, I wouldn't be pouring uh, these paints with Floetrol in them over that because there's a good chance when it dries, the paint will just kind of separate. It won't adhere well. So, but um, yeah, Susan, you can definitely do that. No problem. 
So, and uh, Carla is asking, uh, are you using flood or deco wart medium? This, um, good question. All of these paints are mixed with flood Floetrol. So they're all mixed with uh, two parts Floetrol, one part paint, and then some water. Um, none of these have any deco art pouring medium in there. So uh, we just did some paintings in our membership and I was demonstrating some deco art um, using paints mixed with deco art, a pouring medium, but I haven't used any of those colors. I don't try, I like to try to keep all my paints um, the same as far as what they're mixed with and not kind of cross contaminate them, if, if you will. Um, also, another important thing is all of these paints are the same consistency. So these were all mixed up and used for things like flip cups or ring pours, um, things like that. So they're all the same consistency. I didn't use any of these paints for Dutch pours or uh, really, you know, pearl pours or things like that. So having your paints at the same consistency is a really uh, is a really important thing, and that becomes really important when you start tilting the paints. Uh, paints with very thin consistency will start moving all over. The thicker paints uh, will not move as well and it'll really distort your design a lot. So um, that's really important. So, all right, we're almost ready to go here. Um, and Mama Dulas is asking, Brad, would a paint primer work better than gesso? And um, about the glue and flow trial, so helpful. Uh, I, really wouldn't, um, I really wouldn't use any kind of primer on here at all. Um, if you wanted to use, a, if you wanted to have a solid color to pour on top of, I would just use some acrylic paint and with a brush and just paint over this. Uh, if you wanted to have like a black or a white or a solid color over this, but primer is really not necessary. Um, uh, Cause this is, you know, this is dried, it's acrylic. We're pouring more acrylic, it should dry and have and adhere very well. Um, but that's a great question though. And, uh, and Monique is asking, um, uh, can I pour over a painting that's already completely varnished? Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I, it's, it's not ideal um, because the varnish, you know, depending on the varnish you're using, it can resist your uh, it, it, uh, acrylics from adhering well, but you could um, sand it lightly to um, kind of abrade the surface um, and that might work, that might help, but it's not, it's not ideal. It's not an ideal situation. Um, so I try to avoid that though, Monique. Good question. All right. Uh, let's see here. Anyone else? Quickly before I um, uh, start pouring, I don't see any. So let's go ahead and pour some paint. Um, all right. So no more questions. So if, you have, if any questions pop up, go ahead and throw them in the comments. I'll I'll take a look at them after we uh, do our ring pour. So here we go, we're ready to pour some paint. Now I've got one more decision to make, and that is to pour out of this side of the cup or this side of the cup. I talk about this all the time with ring pours and straight pours. Um, you can pour out of either side. This is the side I layered all my paints in. Um, you can pour out of this side. I like to pour out of the opposite side though quite often. It gives some interesting results. I think I'll pour out of the opposite side on this one. And uh, let's see what we get. So here we go. I'm going to uh, maybe flip the camera before I do that. And you can kind of see the, the paint puddle um, expand. So I'll give you a little bit different view. Let me move this down here, just like that. All right, now I'm gonna pour right about here. So uh, we'll see what happens. All right, here we go. So I kind of like to get it started first and then you can kind of start twirling your cup to kind of add the rings. And you could do the same thing with a straight pour. You'd just be pouring like in one spot without the twirl. And you can go lower and get kind of a thicker ribbon you could take it up and get a little higher and then try to, I want to try to get a nice uh, even rings, but uh, you kind of have to play with it to get just the right height for your cup. There we go. And it starts to even out a little bit more as you kind of get towards the bottom of your cup, which is good. 
So that's the most important part. So here we go. Getting close to the end. And I'm just going to kind of let it come out of there. And then I'm going to tilt the cup back. I think that's pretty good. And then we want to grab that little drip away. And it looks good. We didn't get any drips or anything in our uh, paint puddle. So that looks nice. And uh, we've got our paint on our canvas. It's looking nice so far. It looks like we're going to get a bunch of cells, which is, I found, pretty typical of uh, using the Floetrol. And of course, we've got a bunch of metallics in here. And metallics help generate cells as well. So, so I'm so at first at first glance it looks okay. So let's go ahead and start to tilt, go through the tilting process. And uh, I've talked about this many times. It looks a little strange having this painting underneath it, but uh, we'll start covering it up in a second. So I'm going to just expand my paint puddle over my canvas. And it's tilting a little funky. Um, parts of it are moving quicker than the others. So it, right there is a reason um, you want to have the same consistency. Something happened. One of these paints or a couple of them, I checked them all pretty quickly, but some of them are a little thinner or thicker than others. And that's why this things are distorting so much. So this is good. It's a, a good lesson. Um, and that can happen with leftover paints. Sometimes they can thicken up a little bit. Um, they're not always exactly the same consistency. Some have been sitting for longer than others, um, but it's okay. It's, I'm not worried too much about it. We're going to keep on going. But you can see um, it's moving funny and really weird, and we're getting kind of a crazy distorted design, and that's because of the paint consistency. So there were paints in there that are that were different than the others. And they don't all have to be exactly perfect and identical, but you need them pretty close. Uh, and a couple of these were off. I think it might have been, this is one of them. I think the red seemed thicker. Um, I can't remember what the other one might have been, but I think it might have been the teal was a little thinner, perhaps. So, but hey, that's what we got. <laughs> I'm not too concerned about it. It's, it's, it might be a very interesting painting still. So, but I'm glad it kind of did that because that kind of demonstrates a consistency thing. So we've covered our, we've got our paint puddle all covering most of the canvas. Time to tilt over our corners. And I am just going to start with this one right here since I've got a lot of paint down there. And I just want to cover it up and then tilt back and tilt kind of back into the canvas. And then we'll go to another corner. Uh, where do I want to go next? Maybe I'll go to this one up here. And see, you can see it, you can really see it when I'm tilting. That teal color is really wanting to move very quickly, like right in here. So there's definitely definitely some consistency problems. Okay. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to go backwards. So this is going to be a crazy one. And so now we're going to bring some paint back down here and cover this corner. So if you like this really crazy look, you could, you know, use that, use the different consistencies to your advantage if you wanted to, to get like really wild looking uh, designs. You can just mix and use 
some paints at different consistencies. Yeah, and that's what you'll, that's, this is what's going to happen. So. Okay, last corner. All right, I've got that one done and I'm going to tilt back. So we've covered our whole canvas, tilted over all the edges and corners. Now we'll take a look at it and see if there's anything we want to do to adjust it. It is a crazy wild mess, in my opinion, but I'm going to just wipe my hands off quick. It's kind of got some interesting things happening, though. And I'll point some stuff out. Um, that I like and don't like. So, let's see here. So, I quite like, like, this area. Like, all the colors in here, I think, are very interesting. It's got cool lines and shapes happening. Um, that's kind of neat. This is, like, just totally nuts. All of these lines and wiggly, you know, designs in here. You know, that's very interesting and weird. Um, I like it. I don't like this big kind of blobby thing, so I might try to tilt some of that off. But I really do like this here and kind of this here. Maybe we could kind of tie them together a little bit more. Um, it's a crazy painting. So, but um, it's all about the consistency. That's what's causing all this. So it doesn't look anything like a ring pour uh, now. So it looks just like really weird and, and wild. But let's try to uh, change it a little bit and see if we can make it look a little more interesting. And I'm going to pour off some of this up here. So I'm just going to... And, you know, I'm, all these designs and stuff are going to change as I, you know, pour and tilt. Um, but maybe we could get a little more interesting, maybe more cohesive painting. Okay, so I just want to get rid of some of this, that big, like, bl blob of orange. That was the center of our ring pour, or what was supposed to be our ring pour. That was the first um, layer of paint we used. There we go. So I'm going to tilt it back in the other way now. I'm just bringing some of this, um, all that crazy side, I want to kind of bring it down a little bit more. And I'll show you in a second. Okay, so here we go. It's, I think it's improved. So it's got a little more interesting um, feel to it. It's, it's very chaotic. But uh, I quite like I quite like this this side. It's uh, it, it's not as cool as it was before we tilted, but um, that's okay. It's got that interesting kind of pink color and the, a lot of purples in here. The teals are kind of throughout, so which is nice. That kind of ties the whole thing together. And we got rid of some of that big orange blob that was right in the center. But I do all like all this craziness, like all these, um, it looks like a type of, uh, uh, typographical map type. Is that how you say it? Um, I can't even think of the word <laughs> typography type typographical map. Um, but, um, interesting. It's very interesting. So I'll probably keep this painting, um, because whenever I have something like this happen, like a crazy unexpected mistake you know like normally think people would think oh my god that's a mistake i wrecked it but 
um, it's a great reminder of um, you know what happens when things go wrong. So a lot of the mistakes or bad paintings teach you so much, and you can you know build upon them and learn to correct things down the road. So because you learn a lot more from your mistakes and bad paintings than the good paintings, in my opinion. So, um, but uh, so this is a very interesting, crazy painting. And again, it was all leftover paints. I wasn't expecting anything, uh, you know, fantastic or amazing. It's just basically a big experiment to use up some leftover paints to see what happens. Um, but we got a great learning experience painting with this one, which is really, really nice. So, um, but I'm looking at it on the screen. I like, I like it the way it looks on the screen better than in person. <laughs> so maybe that's good, but I'll turn it. I'm going to turn it around here. I kind of like that view better. So that orientation. Um, so Monica uh, or uh, Monique has got a great, uh, great title for this one, which is Chaos Ring Pour. Absolutely. So um, that is a perfect way to describe this painting. And uh, Lily is asking, could you use a comb or another tool to give it a little more something? Um, you sure could if you wanted to. I probably, if you're going to do a combing and things, I probably would have done it before I tilted that second time because now there's not as much paint on. So it's, it's uh, a little harder to tilt and then tilt the combing like marks and make them look a little more interesting. Oh, but to be honest, I don't think this painting needs any more something. It's got too much of something. So you need to like take something out of it. But uh, yeah, you could definitely do that, Lily. Good suggestion. Okay. And let's see here. I'm just checking to see if there's any other. Uh... And Donna is asking, uh, since you don't really like it, why don't you pour off the purple and pink corner? We could pour some more off. Um, let's take a look at it and uh, see. I'm looking at it now. I, I, I like this like kind of diagonal um, or kind of diagonal composition we've got, like this big diagonal going right up here. Um, and we've got all these this wild craziness over here. We've got these darks over here, which are cool. I like them. And we do have this this like interesting kind of pink corner, but we could tilt some of that off. Sure, why not? Let's give it a shot. Sometimes it's good. And I always encourage um, my students and other people to try this is, you know, if you get a painting, you know, try tilting it um, beyond what you think you, you'd want to do, just so you can kind of see what's possible, how much you can tilt. Because uh, I like to tilt a lot, usually, especially my ring pours. Um, so let's give it a shot. I'm just going to do a little more tilting. I'll tilt some of that purple off. It'll bring that orange side down, kind of more into the uh, the darker side here. So it's taking a little longer just because we've tilted off um, quite a bit already. But it's moving. It's getting there. So at this stage, when you're tilting, you kind of have to be patient. And I like to kind of change the angles a lot. So we've tilted a lot of that off. I'm going to turn it. And then I want to tilt uh, down a little bit. Oh, 
Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to tilt this way a little bit. Now I'm going to pick it up and tilt back the other way. And bring, I always like to bring that paint back down and instead of leaving a, a lot of paint on one of the edges, I kind of want to get it a little more centered on the canvas and it's coming back. Okay, I like that. Okay, so here we go. We've got um, Donna's suggestion. We uh, tilted off that kind of pink and purpley corner. And I think it looks good. It's a little more, you know, cohesive, I guess, because uh, we don't have like this really light side and the dark side. We have, it's more kind of cohesive all over uh, with the teal color is a little more um, evened out. So I think that's an interesting, interesting painting. It's definitely different. And I sure as heck wasn't expecting it to look like this. So, but, um, anyway, so yeah, good, you know, good comment. We could have left it the other way. I didn't mind that at all, really, um, as far as, I mean, as, as far as this painting goes. But uh, yeah, sometimes you just want to take it you know, it's good to take paintings too far um, and overstretch them, like, and, and wreck them kind of on purpose just to see what you can do and just how far you can tilt your paint. It's always good to do that because sometimes um, you get a nice painting and, and you're very timid about wanting to change it or wreck it. Um, but if you go ahead and wreck some stuff on purpose and it, it, you'll learn a lot from that. And then for the next you know, more paintings down the road, you'll know how far you can push things. Um, so it's always good to just, you know, push it past the limit. So, but uh, yeah, that's a good suggestion, Donna. So we pushed it and uh, tried to try to make it a little more interesting, I think. So, all right. So, okay, so I'm gonna flip back here. So that's a weird, Crazy painting, and it's sure not a ring pour, but um, it's something now. All right. So anyway, wow. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I had no expectations, really, other than a ring pour and a ring pour looking painting. Um, but we didn't uh, even get that. So and that is that's a great demonstration of making sure your consistencies are correct. And the way to do that, the easiest way I found to make sure your consistencies are usually always very, very close is you've got to measure your ingredients um, in any number of ways. There are any number of ways to measure them. Uh, a digital scale is a good way. Um, I've got my kind of way that I share in my courses and in my membership. Uh, it's the way I invented to... Uh, measure my paints and ingredients quickly and accurately every time. But uh, um, when you eyeball stuff or just kind of, you know, wing it, this can happen much more often. So um, if you have the same amount of Floetrol in all your paints, same amount of paint in all your paints, and then you're adding your water to the same consistency, um, it's so much easier to get, to, to get it um, consistent all the way across all your different colors. So, so I, I wasn't expecting, I, I checked the, all of these before we started, um, and I thought they were all good, but a couple of them snuck in there. And I think one of the things might have been, the, I think the teal, we used a lot of this teal. I think I might have used this for Dutch pour. So, and it maybe have, had thickened a little bit, because your paints will thicken the longer they sit, uh, but it didn't thicken up that much. So, uh, and that's the one that was really moving around the canvas a ton. So I think that might have been one of the problems. A couple of them might have been a little too thick because they've been sitting. And half of these I added a little bit of water to. The other half looked fine and felt quick, you know, fine after I stirred them very quickly. 
Um, but um, that's one of the, the things with leftover paints. Um, you know, I have to check them carefully. And I never really use uh, leftover paints, in, you know, entirely. Like um, a lot of the times I'll take a leftover paint and I'll use it in combination with new paints I've mixed up. Um, but this is like all leftover paints. So, um, and there's a lot of them, a lot of colors here. Normally I would only be working with like four or five colors. And these are not excuses. I'm just trying to explain, you know, what happened and why we got this um, weird result. And I actually kind of like it. It's a great lesson. Um, uh, and especially if you don't know about the consistencies and things, uh, it's a great thing to watch happen is like, wow, you can totally destroy a painting if your consistencies are wrong. So anyway, and uh, Lily is asking, it's a good question. Do you ever use a consistency chart? Um, I don't really do that that often, like a, uh, a drip test, which that's kind of known as a drip test. And uh, it's a good way to check all your colors and make sure they run at the same rate. Um, and that's a good idea. I normally don't do it, um, but uh, I will do it sometimes when consistency is incredibly important, with it, which is like uh, pearl pores or things like that, um, where the paints are really thin and you need to have them all very uh, similar throughout. Um, sometimes I will use a drip test for that to make sure they all kind of run at the same time. But um, yeah, that's, that's definitely a, a good way to do it. Um, so, but uh, yeah, that's, you can definitely do that. Um, that's a good idea, but I don't do it all that often, but it is a good idea. So, cause it, cause what you're doing with the drip test is, um, you don't, I don't use it just like by, to check like the consistency, if it's too thick or thin, it's used to compare. It's a comparative chart um, to compare all your colors next to each other. That's kind of what I was trying to say. Great, great question, Lily. And uh, Nancy said um, she uses a photo paper so the paint doesn't soak into the paper before I get it, get all of them on. Yeah, that's a great idea is to use like a, a shinier paper uh, for your drip test if you wanted to do that, do that. Um, great, great idea, Nancy. So, okay. And uh, let's see, I'm just checking for any other questions. And if you have any other questions, like last call for any questions um, before we break. And let's see here. So a lot of people do not like the second tilt, but you know, that's okay. It'll live forever on video. So you can always watch it that way. Um, cool. All right. So I don't see any other questions at the moment. And uh, I'm glad you're finding it. Thanks for all the great comments and supportive comments. I really appreciate that. But I'm great. You're, I'm 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 happy you're finding uh, value in in seeing what can happen with the consistency problems. So um, that's a great that's a great lesson. Great lesson for me too. So because um, that's only happened to me. Uh, it's happened to me a few other times, of course. Um, it hasn't happened in a long time though. Um, it happened a lot when I was first starting because I wouldn't. I wasn't measuring very carefully and I was in a hurry because I was so excited about pouring. Um, but, uh, but it has happened off and on every now and then. And uh, oh, Sharon is asking, uh, Brad, do you need to add gesso to wood coasters? Um, yes, I would. But before I add gesso to a wood coaster, I would definitely seal the wood coaster with an acrylic, uh, acrylic medium like um, a gloss, uh, the ones I would use would be uh, a golden gloss medium and just paint that on the front and back of your coaster, two coats, and because you, you want to seal that wood up uh, and you, uh, you want to seal it uh, before you put gesso on it. So two coats of like a golden gloss medium or Liquitex gloss medium. Um, golden makes a product just for that called GAC. 100. Uh, that's the whole purpose of that uh, medium is to seal 
like wooden panels and things. Um, so you definitely want to put two coats of that on before you put gesso on. And then you can put uh, one to two coats of gesso. Great question, Sharon. And uh, Lily was hoping I would have a tip for straightening the jagged line. Um, yeah, I have no, I have no way of straightening out all these jagged lines. Um, but the you know the only thing I can I can recommend is if you get if you get lines like this a lot like these really jaggedy lines, I would mix your paints a little thicker in general. Like keep them all a little bit thicker. Um, they might be too thin. So because some of these paints, the thinner ones created all the really jaggedy ones, jaggedy lines. The thicker ones kind of sluggishly roll around. So you want all your paints to be maybe a little bit thicker. So uh, look for more of a mound when your paint is streaming off your stir stick. So, all right. Um, cool. Well, thank you everyone for all the great comments. I appreciate that so much. Thanks for joining me. Uh, checking out this crazy, you know, leftover paint experiment um, gone sideways, but um, interesting, I guess. So that's why I do these demos, um, you know, to teach and show how to do it and uh, cover problems and how to fix problems and why things happen. So this is a great example of how not to do a ring pour. Perfect. So uh, anyway, um, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you um, uh, get some painting in this weekend. Um, if you do, share it in our group. That would be awesome. Our acrylic pouring club group. And um, if you try a ring pour, just watch those consistencies. And uh, thanks for joining me. I'll see you all again later. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.